This is a meeting of the Lumberster School Committee. It is Monday, June 5th. We are in Apple Seeds Restaurant. I'll read the Lumberster School Committee statement. The committee represents the needs of all public school students and places their interests above all others. We will exercise leadership, adhere to our protocols, and base our decision upon a reasoned assess assessment of all available information. We'll advocate for each of our schools and support high quality public education in Lemonster. And abiding by our rules, uh, it, it says at the beginning of each school committee meeting and with permission of the chair, citizens may address the committee on items on the agenda of, on or any other issues related to overall school operations. And um, you'll have two minutes. Would anyone like to address the school committee? If so, Beller is the first name on here. And Miss Chris will keep the uh, keep count for you. And turn your mic on. Yes. My name is Isabella Bible. I live on 178 Fifth Street. Hello, faculty and school committee. I'm here on behalf of the students of Lemonster High School who not only agree with the idea to share one color at graduation, but want to continue doing so for future classes. My name is Isabella Bible. I, with other 438 students in the class of 2023, graduated last Saturday, all wearing blue. As you all know, the subject of caps and gowns was a hot topic for a few students and staff. I'll admit when I first heard of the change, I wanted to wear white simply because I expected it to be hot. What I hadn't realized was that many of my fellow students didn't want to wear white because it represented a question that had tortured them their whole lives. Would they graduate as a man or a woman? 191 students didn't respond to the survey regarding caps and gowns, and 36 didn't care, so the majority wanted to wear blue and white. Thankfully, Dr. Romano came to the same realization that holding a majority vote for an issue that negatively impacts the minority is not the way to do things. I have written statements to share with you from an anonymous trans student of LHS. I knew I was trans for a long time, but I had never had a word to put towards what I was feeling. It wasn't until my sophomore year at LHS that I had officially come out and was proud of who I was and how that affected me and continuing to grow to this day. While the support from teachers was great and very appreciated for my mental health, it started to decline over the years, partially due to the fact that I was different from the other boys in my school. There came the meeting for caps and gowns and I heard the gendered options. In that moment, I was not used to the word scared, but that's what I felt like. On my day, where I could be seen and heard by my friends and family, a moment I would forever remember, I would be that girl that stuffed into the closet and never wanted to talk about again. I would have to wear a white gown while all the boys I envied for their masculinity would wear blue. The gendered caps and gowns made my heart sink into my stomach and I couldn't help but get an overwhelming feeling and sense that I was alone again. I would forever be who I didn't want to be. And on that one day, I would never repeat, it felt painful. Sad, I was confused and the depression was chasing after me and throughout a moment of clarity, I skipped graduation. I had my parents send the email to confirm it just to avoid having my choice taken away from me. Being separated into a category I swore I was out of. All right. Thank you, Bella. Next is, is it Elijah? Elijah? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Elijah Breen. I live at 6 Jonathan Roberts Lane, and I graduated from Lemonster Center for Excellence on June 1st. As a trans student myself, and with my class doing all the same color green, nobody was hurt by the color of our gowns. And I know that if I was forced to wear one color representing femininity, I would not have felt good at all. I would have wanted to skip graduation. As a trans student, I have faced a lot in these past years where I went to both LHS and LCE. I have been cornered in a bathroom for being in the quote unquote wrong bathroom. And I feared for my safety. There have been many times where I end up in the hospital because the mental strain of what I've been going through. And I would just like to read According to the American Psychological Association, gender dysphoria, as defined in the DSM-5, is a gender identity disorder that causes distress arising from a sense of mismatch or incongruence that one may have about one's experienced gender and one's assigned gender. This is a very real medical and diagnosable condition. Many people argue that white is just a color, but in this case, it's not. It symbolizes women. Having a trans man wear white or a trans woman wear blue will worsen gender dysphoria, leading to very serious side effects and consequences. According to the APA, 
gender dysphoria causes anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, and suicide, all of which I have experienced. According to the National Library of Medicine, trans people are 31 to 50% more likely to commit suicide. A member of Lemister's school committee made a Facebook post where they called out Dr. Romano's decision to wear all blue gowns and wore white gown to graduation and protest. They argued that Dr. Romano's decision to have all blue gowns in order to ensure transgender students would not be dysphoric and suicidal on graduation day was simply gender politics rearing its ugly head. And they can absolutely argue that, but nobody can argue against facts. Facts number one, gender dysphoria is real and serious condition. Okay. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. That was a nice graduation at City Hall. And I learned a lot about the students at LCE. Thank you. Rachel is next. Hi, Rachel. Um, hello, my name is Rachel Magliozzi. I live on 21 Glendale Street. Um, my friend, Emily Valeri, could not be here, but I am reading a statement that she made. Hello, my name is Emily Valeri, and I'm a female graduated senior at Lemons High School. When Dr. Romano announced that the gowns would be changed from their normal gendered colors, I was both shocked and relieved. I was shocked because I had not previously known of the gendered colors. Segregation based on gender is something that I have always stood against because it is simply unfair. We were the only high school around here that has adhered to antiquated gender norms of the past and that places a stain on Lemus for shining reputation. The relief came when I realized that the decision made by Dr. Romano had possibly saved the lives of my friends. I am friends with most of all transgender individuals and have witnessed or heard several of them attempting to take their own life due to the pain of not being seen as a preferred gender. I feel as though keeping the gendered gown colors would have only worsened their struggles and forced them into an impossible choice. They would have been forced to choose between presenting as their birth gender and betraying it and betray their identity, possibly leading to a declining mental state and another attempt on their life, or present as a preferred gender and risk getting kicked out of their very own home simply for being who they truly are. Gendered gowns hold only negatives. As individuals who are not trans, gendered gowns have no benefits. There is no plus side to being separated into men and women. There are only downsides. There are only possibilities of more children losing their lives to suicide. I believe Dr. Romano has made the right choice in abolishing the gendered gowns and helping us all be united in our sea of blue. We're the blue devils, not the blue and white devils. And Dr. Romano did his duty to ensure that there would be no more empty chairs at graduation. Thank you for listening to me, and I encourage you to all to keep the ungendered gowns. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Emily, right? So, Larry? Okay. Thank you, Rachel. The history is fine. I wouldn't give you, you don't have to give you a number. Brianna? Welcome. Hello, my name is Brianna Patel, um, 85 Howard Street. From my understanding, all sc school committee members are supposed to have a nonpartisan stance if they are to represent the committee. Unfortunately, this was not the case on Saturday because one member decided to have a silent protest on the single gendered colors this year at the graduation ceremony. They were clearly making an anti-trans conservative statement by saying that the school allowed gender politics to rear its ugly head. I believe his statement would have been okay had he not been sitting in the stand, had he been sitting in the stands with the rest of the public. However, this was not the case because he was on the field with the rest of the committee, therefore representing the committee and disrespecting the norm of nonpartisanship. He doesn't actually care about the students or the girls, but more about reinforcing the status quo and upholding outdated gender norms. I'm disappointed that I have to have this conversation, Lemonster MA. This isn't Florida. Gender politics are gonna be poking its ugly head in places because it's important to discuss, especially in a progressive state. Also, Lemster is very diverse. It prides itself on diversity, and the mayor has often made this a talking point in his own speeches on various occasions. He's even raised an LGBTQ flag and spoke about spoke up around Pride Month multiple times in the past. Why are we upholding such traditional conservative norms which fight against this belief? In doing so, we put closeted trans students in a compromised situation. They have to choose between outing themselves to a potentially unsupported family or being uncomfortable in a gown that doesn't match their identity. Finally, I want to address the elephant in the room. I really don't think it's a good look for the school district, the school committee, and the individual in particular to have a cis straight white man waltzing around in a white gown trying to push conservative and traditional values. Thank you for your time. Anna? Rosemary? Don't give the number of your house. You don't have to do that. You just, just switch street. Uh, my name is Rosemary Anderson. I live on Green Street here in Lemonster. I'm here tonight to mourn the death of the integrity of the Lemonster School Committee. 
It appears that one of the members who was elected to represent the interests of the schools put false culture war politics over the interests of the students. What he called protesting is an inane waste of time and effort, and it demonstrates what could at best be called apathy. It's the job of the school committee to focus on the issues that truly matter to the students. But what one of your own has done is take the spotlight away from issues that actually matter um, and brought it instead to a non-existent problem and caused, a, and caused a false moral panic over gender politics and canceling students. I hope the com committee member is overwhelmed with shame as they sit on the board actively doing nothing to solve problems that actually face our city and st instead spend their effort on non-existent social issues. I applaud that individual for manipulating the public into voting for you so you could waste their time as a living. Thank you. Thank you. And Lily, you go next. Hello, Hi, Lillian Lily. Wyckoff, uh, Revolution Drive. There are many impressive and brave transgender and non-binary students that have spoken on the issue of trans exclusion. So I'd like to speak on a slightly different facet of the issue. So let's talk about colors. For generations, white is a color that has been used to symbolize purity and innocence. It is a color that has been used to strip women of their individuality, to separate them as others, and to separate them from the boys. Uh, on a note of practicality, white robes turn sheer in the rain, which would have been an issue on Saturday. Do you want our students in sheer robes? I don't think so. Now, let's talk about blue. Blue is our color. We are the blue devils. We bleed blue. This is the color that unites us as a school. This is a non-issue and the matter is decided. We wore blue robes on Saturday and it went fantastically. We looked like a class graduating together. Additionally, I'd like to address what this action by the member of school committee really was, a stunt for a campaign. This member participated in the culture war and blatantly and selfishly used our graduation as a ploy for re-election. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Would anyone else like to address the committee? Yes, just your name and street. My name is Wendy Anderson. I live on Green Street in Lemonster. I'm the parent of a recent graduate of LCE. My daughter also happens to be a young trans person. She's among the lucky kids who get to be out and their authentic selves at home and feel safe and supported. Not every child has that luxury. Not everyone who is transgender is ready to be fully out, and not everyone who is transgender can be their authentic self safely. And as to the comment on social media that it was canceling girls, I just want to tell you as a girl and the mother of girls, I promise you, single color gowns at graduation do not make us girls feel canceled. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to address the committee? Once again, one last time. Anybody online? Okay, one last time, you sure? All right, we'll close this portion of the meetings, thank you. We'll now move on to communications, superintendent. Yes, you have one in here yes. from Keystone Educational Collaborative. We are members, so you have to be notified that they have purchased uh, 143 Jocelyn Street. Well, they haven't purchased Apple it yet. They right, so they have along. So yep. it's just information for you. All right, thank you. Anything else, superintendent's report? I think You're we're gonna, gonna have the students the report too. Before, before we get into that, Matt, I just want to take a moment. Uh, as most of you know, uh, Matt graduated with the class of 2023 on Saturday. So congratulations to Matt. Uh, Matt and Gold were our first ever student reps on this committee, and it took a lot of hard work to get them here, and they helped create a, a wonderful model to go moving forward. Um, so we do have a little gift of appreciation from Matt Angle, the nice Lemonster Blue Devils jacket. And a coaching so, jacket. Does that mean you have to call you coach now? Now that you have a coach's jacket. <laughs> so with that being said, and Matt's graduation, we have two brand new student reps who are going to be joining us officially at our next meeting. Um, who are going to give our student report today. Tyler from LHS, come on up to the table. Well, hold on, hold on one second. So uh, maybe there are other members that would like to, I didn't know this was going to happen, so this is new to me, but Matt, I appreciate you coming tonight. I think I might have told them that I was going to present. They, they're welcome to, but they- No, 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 not about that part. About, I yeah. didn't know you were going to come and I didn't know you were going to presentation. So well, I don't miss it, just because I'm out of here. There may be no you can't get rid of me that easily. There may be other members that want to just thank you and, and acknowledge that uh, came 
um, to the committee open-minded. And for me, at least, it was refreshing to hear someone speak about issues very plainly and descriptive and fairly had done some thinking about it, representing all sides, just kind of putting it all out there for us to kind of, hey, you know, I didn't think of that. And that, that it's a good approach to, to life, I think. And so I think on, at least on my end, I enjoyed the animated uh, approach to things <laughs> and your energy. And again, your, your open-mindedness, willingness to listen to everybody and kind of try to blend it all down and, and boil it down to the point where you can make a, a good presentation on all fronts. So from at least on my behalf, I just like to thank you. And I know there are other members that feel the same way, but uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, man. thank you for coming. Go ahead, I was yeah. just gonna say, I wanted to thank both you and Gold. I know she can't be here, um, but yeah. you both were um, very inspirational and uh, added a lot of value to our meeting. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. And congratulations and good luck. I just want to say I appreciate your perspective. I think uh in, in Gold's perspective. Um, um I think it's important to have the student voice here in the discussion mm -hmm. at all times. And personally, I like the way that you didn't back down from your opinion all ever. Um, even when we would go around and around and around and around, you'd always make sure that you came in and held your own and, and stood up with your opinion. And that's something you should hold on to the rest of your life. Yeah, that um, means a lot. Thank you. So, but I, I appreciate your presence, and uh, I appreciated the full um, input all so far this year. Thank you. Yeah. So we're gonna have a peaceful transfer of power here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they're hopefully gonna <laughs> they're gonna do great. I met I met both of them separately and together, and they're they're great. Well. Thank you a lot. Yeah, I really appreciate all the kind words and I appreciate this position. I've had a great time. I've enjoyed all the meetings. I've learned a lot and I'm really thankful that I've had the opportunity. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank Good you. Luck. So obviously graduation happened over the weekend. I'll have to go over that again. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time uh, speaking to the seniors. I think it was nice, nice, a lot of great speakers. Uh, yeah, good times. Um, so in terms of academics, uh, what did you guys, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go. <laughs> no, this is it. <laughs> so Tyler is our new representative from the high school, uh, and then Marcus will come up. He's our new representative from CTEI. Yeah. My name's Tyler. I'm the new Matt. So I'll be here. <laughs> Got big shoes still. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, so over the weekend, like Matt said, uh, graduation happened. Um, it was rainy and wet for you people who were there. I would say it was, it was, it was true. So yeah, it was, it was. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, we were, we were cleaning off the table, uh, the, the chairs and, and he said it's technically not raining in Rochester. So, um, but other than that, moving on to academics, uh, this week, freshmen have biology MCAS. They're taking it tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, so those are the first two periods of the school. Uh, juniors have been engaging in their civic action project and their history classes. This is a project that's required by law um, and a requirement for graduation. So every history class is, is conducting these civic action projects. I think some of you have gone to see some of them. Um, I think that's, that's true. Uh, undergraduate awards uh, will be held on Tuesday, June 13th at 6.30 in the LHS Auditorium. And then lastly, final exams will be held the week of June 19th with the holiday on the 19th and the last day of school being the 23rd. Uh, on to Lemonster Athletics. So uh, LHS teams continue to have great success throughout the year. I'm going to go one by one. So LHS softball, number 10, Lemonster, be number 23, Masconomit. Um, you sure? Sure? Yeah. It's a tough. What is it? it you sure? All right. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere on the cable. You know, All right. We beat them. <laughs> we beat them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... They beat them last Thursday, nine to three, and they're advancing to the round of 16 in the state tournament. Uh, and they'll be playing sometime this week. Uh, boys baseball beat Tantasqua last Wednesday, 13 to five to win the Central Mass D1 championship. They'll be playing again tonight against Silver Lake at Doyle at 6.30. So should be playing. Yeah, a few minutes. <laughs> uh, number 10, Lemonster's boys volleyball beat North Middlesex and won the Central Mass Athletic Directors Championship. 
they'll enter the D2 state tournament, round of 16. They'll be playing number seven, Greater New Bedford, away today at 530. So they should be playing now. Uh, and then girls lacrosse won Central Mass Class A championship, beating Algonquin last week. Uh, the number five ranked Lemonster is facing number 28, Oliver Adams, today in the round of 32 at four at Doyle. So they probably did. Good. Good. That's good. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then for clubs at LHS, Sewing Club did a food drive for Ginny's Food Pantry. Uh, many other clubs are doing the end of the year celebrations. Uh, student council recently elected new officers, so they had their first meeting last Thursday. Um, and then NHS also elected their new officers a few weeks ago. Uh, and then elections for class officers will be held this week with speeches being, I think, either Thursday or Friday. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's that's it. I don't know how this great runs, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Too. Got big shoes to fill there. <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Marcus Tomis. I am the new CTI representative for this year. So, Welcome. you know. Welcome. Hmm? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, there isn't really much to report on, you know, end of the year. I had to, you know, pick up some crumbs from Mr. Kine. But, you know, so there's a Granite Street House edition. Carpentry is close to finishing. Uh, HVAC is adding many splits to it. So, you know, that's really nice, really nice project for them. Um, the co-op continues to grow exponentially. It's doing really well. 79 new students within the past year, which is amazing. The electrical shop just added their 16th new student to co-op. Mm, let's see what else. And yeah, we wish all our recently, recently graduated seniors the best as they, you know, leave our school and prepare for the real world. How, yeah. uh, when they have the open house, how many students, do you know, I mean, offhand, uh, how many students, um, enrolled in ctei as a result so for me how many students i saw there it was it's it's more than you expect yeah, it's yeah. like almost i would say 100 i think i don't know <laughs> that's good no yeah. good yeah thank and you somebody thank came you. through and even if you get 10 percent of that yeah. right that. right right you know being in cti myself it's a really good experience for, for you know preparing yourself you know a new skill skill that you can use for the real world it's Pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm in culinary here. So I always see this table set up. You know, I'm never here. This is my first time being here. So, you know, always sweeping up after the cookies. <laughs> That's definitely Sal. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect, Sal. So. No, I even have a cookie. <laughs> well, thank you very Thank you, Marcus. Much. Of course. Thank of you course. so much for the same Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And um, now we got uh, presentations and discussions. Introduction of, is it Bevan Tapley? It is. So, uh, Johnny O.C. Principal. Yes, yeah, so we're very excited. Bevan, if you can come forward. Thank you. I put a name and a face together. Bevan has been an employee of ours for over 22 years. I'm an exemplar teacher for many of those. She has helped cultivate professional development, move curriculum forward. She has always been a go-to girl. Um, for all of us. So we've always appreciated that. She's been, how many years assistant principal? This is year four as assistant principal. I was at Skyview for my first year and then went back to Johnny Appleseed for three years, past three years. So she's been there. She is a wealth of knowledge about JA and will be a wonderful community builder, staff builder. She was, she stood above all other candidates through the interview process. Uh, Brandon was a part of that as well. So I wanted to make sure that everybody, after successful negotiations, meets our new principal. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'm really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's always things. I mean, no matter who you are, where you stand in the hierarchy, there's always things that you see that we would want to do as the, what the fund gets sort of handed off. So that's that's all my belief. We can ever help you with that. Thank you. At least on the city side, all our departments are always willing to help out. I know we have to trim the brush back, back side <laughs> with a. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a parking lot. We've talked about that a few times. <laughs> oh, trying to do one school a year. So, 
cookies keep coming. <laughs> my big deal that Tony Appleseed cookies. Keep coming. And next year is the 250th birthday. Yeah. Tony Appleseed. So we just yeah, so big we do Okay. Big Looking event. on that. Yes, the playground. Yes. Yes. We're very excited about that. Now, JA is moving in an awesome direction right now. I just am excited to keep the momentum going. And I've had an awesome mentor in Patty King. Yeah, so I just feel like I'm, yeah. yes, I feel like I'm ready to go. So thank you. Thank you. Gosh, yeah. Best of luck. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now get to work. Yeah. <laughs> and it just keeps getting sweeter and sweeter here. That's uh, it's shot well presentation. Yes. Favorite, favorite, favorite presentation. I told him I said that they brought cookies and food. It's a bribery at work. <laughs> it works, it works, right? <laughs> Thank you for having us tonight. Kyle with us? Kyle's with you. Kyle's pretty good at this. There we go. Mm -hmm. There it is. Give him a second. Thank there you, Kyle. There we go. Security updates. All right, um, 14th year. It seems like yesterday, back in 2009. Um, next slide. There we go. Uh, Chatwell's team and myself, uh, Michelle Palladino. Um, Michelle Palladino has been with us since 2017. Uh, she actually got a promotion this year, so she'll be moving on um, for her new oh, career path. Uh, she good for you, actually, you Chris. Uh, our, <laughs> an rd with us uh, back in 2017 she became assistant director um, in 2021 she did a fantastic job mm -hmm. and that was recognized and um, she'll be um, running her own account at a nearby uh, district um, so we are gonna say farewell to her today but mm -hmm. we're also going to welcome our new person next week uh, jackie clayman uh, she's our new assistant director we'll be starting next monday she'll have a few weeks with michelle and the rest of our team is megan monat and chris callahan Uh, Did you do that? Oh, um, oh, that threw me off. Uh, tonight's agenda, uh, program highlights. We're going to talk about universal free school meals, uh, community CEP. Um, we're going to talk about participation, upgrades in the kitchen equipment, the 2023 20, 20, uh, 24 uh, financials, and the 23 24 challenges of this year. Some program highlights for this year. We received 116,000 from my supply chain assistance from the USDA. Um, that was due to you know the inflation and food costs rising. Um, so they pitched in and helped us out a little. Uh, we've also um, put in over half a million dollars investing back into our program um, from the uh, proceeds that we had this year. Uh, amongst the big one was the high school renovations. And I'm sure some of you uh, took a tour with us um, a few months back when it was finished back in December. We've also purchased many pieces of equipment, upgraded many pieces of equipment around the district, ovens, washers, dryers, <laughs> tables, refrigerators, um, freezers, uh, garbage disposals. We've installed um, dishwashers, uh, heating cabinets. Um, so we've done quite a bit and we've got a, uh, quite a bit of small wares as well. A couple other things we've done. Uh, Michelle actually um, put this program together. We've had uh, two UMass dietetic interns this year. Uh, previously, we've always had one, but Michelle added uh, another one this year. Um, with Michelle leaving, we're going to continue that program with our with our new assistant director, and um, she's done a fabulous job um, with that with that program as well. We've also hired two uh, CTI students this year for our co-op program. We hope to continue that next year. The only stumbling block that we have in our kitchen, they do have to be 18 years old to work in the kitchen, but we found a couple. And then we brought them on, and they were uh, they were wonderful employees for us. Um, they worked every other week with us, and they were a great help as well. Um, we've also performed over 30 events in Lemister, you know, from educational and classroom, student choice programs, uh, food tastings, discovery chick chicken, chicken, <laughs> uh, kitchens as well. Universal free. All right, that is a. Um, program that the USDA in Massachusetts has had for the past three years it means every student um, in Massachusetts gets to, receives a breakfast and lunch at no charge. Um, that program hopefully is going to continue. Governor Healy did propose funding for it for this year. 
the House of Representatives of Massachusetts also um, put it, proposed it as well, and they took it one step further. They actually want to make it a permanent thing in Massachusetts. Um, but the Senate in Ways Committee meeting, uh, excuse me, Means Committee, um, did not put it in their funding, but not that it's over. They're going to talk through it, and hopefully, you know, that will um, progress into next year. So we probably won't find out for a couple of months. So we hope to get more information. Once we get that information, we will release it to you right away. So our backup plan, if we do not get that, is our CEP, which uh, the Parent Information Center has been doing a great job of keeping this um, up to date with us. Um, and what CEP is, is basically the same thing as universal free. It's just finance, you know, the, the students won't recognize anything. What it is, is it's, it's a burden on um, the food service department. It's just different financials, how that works. Um, Lemeser currently is over the 40% threshold. Um, the Massachusetts wanted to make it a 25% over the threshold. And what that is, is means that you can apply for a CEP if you're over 40% and with your uh, direct certified. And we are over 40%. We were actually 44 last year when we did this. Our numbers have increased, and so we're going to reapply for CEP this year. Uh, it went up to about 54%, um, and they give us a multiplier of 1.6. So it's going to drive us up to 86% um, a, a free rate that we would get reimbursed for. Right now, we're at 70. So with that said, um, like I said, the Parent Information Center, Jen and uh, Tina are really working hard. Um, getting all that information into the state um, so we could uh, move forward and hopefully get these numbers so we do have a backup plan if we do not get the universal free. This is the um, little thing I did, uh, the participation through uh, uh, the 30th of April. Uh, just shows you what each school has been doing and where we are district-wide, 75% district-wide for lunches and 33% um, for breakfast. Uh, 75 is actually a pretty good number, you know, compared to other districts. We want to try to hit that 80 mark next year, um, and we would really like to drive that breakfast uh, percentage up to at least 40, even 50 percent would be great. So we, we do want to drive those numbers because the more the higher the percentage, that means the more kids that are eating. So, uh, and these are our end of the year financials. These are our estimates. Um, you know, it talks about uh, uh, the total meals, the total meals turn into revenue in the next lines, <clears throat> and that total revenue line. And then we and have, of course, we have our expenses, and we just subtract our expenses by, um, well, subtract the revenue from the expenses, and that gives us a return. That return is an estimate, but that's pretty pretty close ballpark, working with Melanie on that. Um, and that's the return just for this year. That's not including what we uh, carried over from the previous year. So we do have a large uh, sum in our account. I mean, like I said, we are working with the business department um, and trying to drive that down a little because we do. We can only have three months of expend uh, in our account, and we will be over that. Challenges. The upcoming challenges for this year, obviously spending down the revolving account. Uh, we like to, you know, we can't have any more than three months operating expenses. So we're going to work with the business partner, Melanie and, and um, Paula, and try to, you know, drive those um, numbers down a little. Employee labor is always a challenge. Uh, we did increase uh, salaries this year, starting salaries to be more competitive with everybody else. Um, but, you know, it's been kind of a revolving door, to be honest with you. We have been getting a lot of applicants, which is great. Uh, it's just we just can't keep, keep them um, too long in, into, uh, into our program. But, you know, Hopefully next year, you know, we'll get a new brew, new, new brew in and we can uh, kind of go from there. Supply chain is always going to be an issue. Uh, it's been an issue this year. Sometimes it's paper, sometimes it's bread, sometimes it's, you know, chicken. Um, it, all, it all depends. Um, but I think the supply chain is going to be an issue again next year. Probably not as bad as it was. It's getting better. You know, over two years ago, it was real bad. Last year wasn't too bad. So hopefully, you know, we've seen some progress in, in all that. So hopefully, um, you know, that'll continue moving forward as well. And these are just pictures of some events we've done over the past. Think of the Mayo, St. Patty's Day, we did some elementary stuff, um, you know, Fallbrook and Johnny Appleseed and um, the videos, I'm gonna stop at the videos. If you have a chance, if you can go on, this is what the interns that, you know, Michelle brought in, um, click on these, you know, videos sometime when you have a moment to, to watch these. 
you know, they worked with Tim Smith, the director, of, the tech director of the TV and the film theater, uh, and you know his students. So it was a collaborative. You know, it was real nice that everybody came together and and, and you know everybody kind of learned from each other. So if you ever have a chance, you know, these are just three videos. Uh, how many videos are in the show? Probably about one a month. One a month. So yeah. we just picked three videos. So if you have a chance, you know, you can go on and just you know check them out and see what you think. Let us know. With that said, that's about it for me. And so is there any questions? Yes, please. I just have one quick question, but first, thanks for everything you guys do. The yeah. cafeteria here looks amazing. You guys are a great partner to work with. And at Ginny's, you guys always think of us first. So when you have stuff that you can't give out, so thank you for that as well. Um, on the participation, there's yep. a couple of breakfast numbers that are like significantly higher. Is that uh, schools that are doing it in the classroom? Yes, that's breakfast in the classroom. You probably notice those on Francis Drake. Um, and priest. priest yeah and priest yeah. yeah both of those uh have breakfast in the classroom and those are very successful programs over here great thank you came by uh, the priest three months ago 92 percent what do you attribute that to and is there anything that we can learn from that to bring to well i think the biggest thing for that is you know it's a smaller school um and i just think it's you know where everybody comes down and, and congregates into that small area. It just, you know, kids just like to go through the line and, and just like just like to eat. And those numbers have increased. Those lunch numbers increased when we brought breakfast in the classroom. Those because Priest was always hanging around that 70 mark. Um, but once we brought breakfast in the classroom, they got in the classroom and, and then we watched the the lunch numbers just blow up. So might, that might have something to do with it. You know, the kids, you know, mingling, coercing and talking and and then oh, bringing right. it down. That age constantly has that. Yeah. <laughs> I could say it's great food, too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was my last line. Um, um, sir. As as the um, government puts <clears throat> more regulations in, in terms of healthier options, and I know we talked about this the first time when the Obama administration yep. began to start to, you know, they started to push healthier options. And at the time, I asked, well, how do we know kids are eating the food? So... I don't know any way other than measuring the Wait, barrels, the waste. The waste. There, I'll be honest with you, there, there, there's a big waste, you know. Um, and and you I know, see it when I go into yeah. the school room. Yeah. Systemic action team. Oh. Anyway, I, I think it has to be some way to measure. You know, yeah, I mean, we definitely, we, when we get our new interns, and you know, we could definitely have them run a project like that. Michelle, when she was back in 2012, she ran a waste program. We had her run a waste program when she was an intern. Um, and, that, you know, that's what her biggest notice was, you know, the vegetables and the fruit waste. You know, they got 22 minutes to eat. By the time they get through the nine, now you're talking, they got 11, 12 minutes. They're going to eat their main meal for us. Right. And the, little, the younger ones will, they want to talk, you know. So, I mean, that's a challenge. But, like, you know, to your point that more regulations are coming. Yeah. You know, the sodium regulations, the sugar regulations. Yeah. Which is all good. Yeah. But if they're not eating the food and they're throwing it away. Right, exactly, that, exactly. Because... But we also try to, you know, you know, especially when fruits are in season, we try to, you know, drive those fruits, watermelons, the blueberries, you know, strawberries, the fresh fruits. And, you know, we've met with a, a bunch of students already and we talked about that. And those are the things they'd like to see. But the challenge is when they're off season, you know, I mean, it's it a little more cost, but, you know, with the supply chain, you know, perhaps we can work something out. And, you know, get those things so they they will eat that stuff. You know, we want them to eat the fruits and yeah. vegetables. And and it's for families, it's gotten expensive because Very. all the healthy options are the most expensive. Most expensive. You know, they try to yeah. stick around the perimeter of yeah. the store. Oh yeah, sure. Right. But right. that's the most expensive section. It's Everything totally else right. in the middle is stuff that's killing everybody with sugar and salt. Absolutely right. Trying yeah. kind to of wean them off and provide yeah. other other healthier options. Right. But sometimes taking away something isn't always the answer. I agree. We, and then given I think um, the other extreme, they call right. it half healthy. I mean, there, there, there's talk, and I'm sure you heard about the news that we want to pull chocolate milk away now. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, that that'll be because of the fat. <laughs> well, yes. the fat content in it. Yeah. It's, so it's, well, we, we use it. the low fat. And, I mean, and exactly. but I mean, it's just still lots of things. Yeah. Right. Mr. Ron, three, three, three questions. You said about the supply chain. Yes. What part of the supply chain do you find most daunting? Well, Ron, a few years ago, I would say, you know, um, the, just the different foods and the chickens and stuff like that. But now it's just, it's a little different. You know, it's now it's like, it could be bread one. It could be like a flour issue. It could be um, paper issue. 
you know, I mean, there's been times Michelle and I had to run to the store and take all Hannaford's papers off off his shelf. So it's getting better. It's not really, I can't say, you know, it's this item, that item. Um, it's kind of like sporadic right now. I, I know I read this. How much money are we talking about that would cause the Senate ways not to propose? It, it's a total of around $400 million. You know that that's getting about two hundred million from USDA, and getting about you know two hundred from from Massachusetts. That's the ballpark figure. Then finally, the last question you you had you said you had two trans dietetic engines. Yes. Is there a, is there is there a potential for more Absolutely. dietetic interns? Yeah. And what do you project? How many dietetic interns? Well, the dietetic engines you have are they? They're for the, I, I realize they're for the whole school. Yes. But do you have them? Is there potential for one per school? One per school, or one per you know how many per grade? So the, uh, um, how many per grade? How many for whatever kind of maladies, illnesses, whatever you know? Yeah. Because to make a because you were saying it's either you or Dan was about the healthy foods, you know. Uh, Go ahead and stop me. Say something. Right. Go ahead and stop. Well, um, I don't know. I'm waiting. <laughs> He's taking him to take over. Well, where's your stop? Please take over. Um, <laughs> all right, go ahead. She's going to answer you. The way that it works is going to answer you. You're right. She's going to answer you. You're all laughing. Yep. But no, I'm is not laughing. Very, it's very important. She was gonna, she's going to yep. answer. So, she's um, gaining her thoughts, and she was going to answer. I'm an adjunct professor at UMass Lowell, and I coordinated a dietetic internship with Lemonster Public School, as well as other Chartwell's districts within the state. Um, the reason why we have two per year currently is because I oversee them, and I'm just honestly too busy to take on more than one. Um, the other reason is the program is quite small. Um, there's only about eight to 10 students in the program at UMass, and they are kind of spread out. spread out throughout the country, uh, throughout the state. And they have to do different uh, nutrition programs. So not just in schools, they have to go to hospitals, um, different community centers like WIC programs. So their time here is not really long. Labor intensive? Um, it depends on the day. It could be. Um, they've moved product all over schools with me, or they've spent time doing computer work. It just depends on what we need that day. Um, could we take more? Perhaps yes, but I don't think we're quite there yet. And they also have an agenda. They have to. Have yeah, to they have certain... competency yeah. Who that has they the have agenda? to fulfill. You must go. Yep. So they have to fulfill specific competencies. Yeah. All right, Melissa was next. Go ahead, Melissa. Right. Thank you, Ron. So you touched on it briefly, and I think we spoke about it a little bit. Um, the younger kids, they like to talk, and their time and lunch is rather short. As we're doing renovations, is there an ability to open up more lines so that kids can get through faster and have more time to eat? And I, I Personally, I think that's why a lot of the younger kids bring their lunch is because they want to be able to just sit down and eat and not waste time in line. I mean, we, we've, um, you know, actually break it down, you know, you know, per class, per lunch. You know, you, you're talking, you got about 20, 30 kids on each side, uh, which isn't many uh, that, that flow through the lines. And they get in there about seven, at the elementary level, about seven to eight minutes. But like I said, it's just, you know, the high school kids, they're about nine to ten. But they finish, you know what I mean? Um, it's just the kids, they just, yeah, and it's, just, it, it's challenging. With the, but to answer your question about multiple lines, at that level, no, honestly, no. It, we, we just can't see it, um, you know, because of the entryways and, and the registers. Then we have to add another register and another employee. Um, I mean, we could try to talk about it, you know, to, you know, and in, in kind of measure the times and stuff. And, and we definitely can definitely look into something. No. I think a big piece of it, too, is um, for the child remember, remembering their PIN numbers. And believe it or not, we still have children, we're in uh, June, who don't remember. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So sometimes the beginning of the month, like September, October, can be very challenging getting the children through at the elementary level quickly. Um, that's why we kind of rely on teachers to maybe tape it on their shirt or, you know, wear a bracelet that reminds them. 
Uh, but typically over the months, it does improve. And, and our team is, is real. Some of them know, yeah. most of them know them all by name. And they kind of just get them through quick, as quick as we can. No doubt. But, um, but like yeah. 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 Well, yep. you're young. You have no concept of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want, yep. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, you know, I appreciate everything that Chartwell does. You do a lot of other community things. I know you always are very uh, generous uh, for my agency. Um, you also utilize, which you didn't mention, um, local produce. I know you get like apples from Solon Farms and other local um, community um, vendors. Um, so that is wonderful that we're supporting our neighbors. Um, in our community. So I just wanted to point that out. And um, having a revolving count to spend down is a good problem in Challenge yeah. Dav, as opposed to not <laughs> having anything. Um, so I think that's uh, very good. And so I don't really have any questions. I just wanted to thank everyone uh, for all their work. And I know um, all the lunch uh, staff people work tirelessly um, and we do appreciate everything they do for our students. So I just wanted to say that. Well, thank you. Thank Good you. Good job. 14 years, a long time. Yeah. No, next year will be 15. <laughs> the yeah. average nice. uh, tenure is about a oh, year and a half. <laughs> so let's start spending your money. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, Melanie yelled at me the other day. She, I walk in and she's like, stop making money. <laughs> um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Yes. Um, I feel like I've grown up with you all. Aww. I've been an intern since almost 10 years I've known Bob, yeah. uh, which is crazy. So um, started as a dietitian, worked my way through the district um, to become assistant director. And now I'm going on to my very own school district. Where are you so, going? You didn't tell listen, us. Listen, Matt. Well, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I'm still so close by, so I'll be here. <laughs> She's also getting married. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. congratulations. Thank you. You go, go, go. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but thank you, and and you all have been so amazing to me, Paula. I can't thank you enough for all you've oh, done you. and and how you've um, been there for me. So, thank you. Well, good luck. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank all right, now we're going to talk about budget transfers. Speaking oh. of <laughs> overabundance, and, no, and then we'll talk about summer school. How's that? I don't think no. I didn't. Is that summer school? It's warm. No, no, no. Next, it's after this. Okay. Warren's. Okay. As long as everybody's had their cookies, we're ready. <laughs> All right, so you have year-end transfers in front of you. I have them on my phone. Um, these are cleaning up the end of the year, trying to reallocate funds that we didn't use where we thought we would use them. What was the total balance, would you say, estimated, rounded off? That we had to transfer? Mm -hmm. um, Just because people might be watching and they yeah. don't know what's in front of us. That's okay. It was yeah. roughly $2 million. All right. So yeah. we had two million, and the task was to kind of prioritize some of the needs that you still had that you weren't able to address during the school year. Yes. And you made a recommendation to the school committee as to what those needs are and what yes. those amounts are. Okay. The largest portion of that is is transferring out of the salaries lines and into our expense lines to cover that. And that's not because we didn't fund the positions; it's because no. in some cases you weren't able to. Fill those positions. That doesn't a, mean we don't that's need a them. Piece of it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean we don't need them or not still. No, no, no. We definitely would have rather. Do so that's a one-time yes. kind of thing <laughs> where you're transferring salary wages to expense. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. There's a few informative ones in there at the bottom that I don't need a vote on, but it is just it, this is you know more for everybody to see that I've also made other transfers that I don't need approval for, just mm -hmm. informational. Um, but the two that I need the, the largest votes um, are that salary to expense transfer list and then the, uh, excuse me, in between salary DESI codes, anything above $10,000, I need a vote. So that's the second one that needs a vote, uh, which is just the $76,000 one. Does anybody but, have any questions at all? No. I think it's broken down. It's yeah. pretty obvious what they are. 
So I think you can do it both together. Do you want me to do them separately or together? Because there's from salary to salary. They'll have to be separate. Okay. I'll make a motion to transfer from uh, the list that we received from salary to expense to the expense account. All right. Let's make a motion and second by Ron. Any questions or comments? If not, yes. signify in the usual manner. Okay. Next. Uh, and then I'll make a motion to transfer from salaries to the other line in salaries. All right. So motion second. Okay. And then the rest are informational. Any questions? If not. All in favor? Anything else? Um, we Lawrence. do have Lawrence. Okay. Sorry, for right now. Over here. How's that? Any of you? Uh, there's quite a few of them. <laughs> well, at some point we have to do them. Buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll make a motion to approve the following warrants. First, from the general fund, warrant 39, that totals $306,085.55. Warrant 40, that totals $5,762,141.06. Warrant 41, that totals $72,057.81. Warrant 42, totaling $3,228,524.05. Warrant 43, that totals $754,913.73. Warrant 44, that totals $2,802,052.33. Warrant 45, totaling $299,008.92. Warrant 46, totaling $3,025,273.80. And warrant 47, totaling $483,531.68. Okay. Oh, motion. I got some more. I don't know we got lots more. That was just one page. <laughs> uh, from Grants and Revolving, I've got Warrant 39 totaling $18,922.81. Warrant 40 totaling $270,415.14. Warrant 41 totaling $9,304.39. Warrant 42 totaling $780,994.12. Warrant 43, totaling $115,814.03. Warrant 44, totaling $284,369.88. Warrant 45, totaling $70,136.23. Warrant 46, totaling $835,256.10. And warrant 47, totaling $412,073.27. All right, very well done. Good job. Have a second. Motion by Melissa and second by Ron. Any questions, comments? Spent a lot of money in five minutes, less than five minutes. Give me another Let's five. Slow it down. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like going shopping. Put it more. Put That's more. It. Put things in more bags so you feel like you got a lot. You got more stuff. Money. Yes. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Okay. Now, summer school. This is Renee Costra and this is Laura Van Horn. Hello. 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 It's very There's busy. so many things. It's all the, good stuff. It's the enrichment. Yes. Yes. So we're just here to kind of give you an update of our um, numbers and what we have. We are definitely um, going through with offerings. Um, so I'll start off with um, the summer academy getting to know kindergarten. Our Kindergartens, we went through four days of screening with our kindergartens. So now, and Margaret and Andy have put out the getting ready for kindergarten out to, to teachers, I mean, to students and their families about attending. And we'll hopefully have a list for each school. Each school has two classrooms of up to 12 in their classrooms. So they'll hopefully, if parents are listening and they're looking for that, the principal or assistant principal at Priest and Bennett will be informing you this week at this point. Um, we have our getting ready for, um, I mean, so a, a summer academy enrichment program for kindergartens to current fifth graders at Fallbrook NJA. And right now we're at 283 students um, split, and we are still have a waiting list that we're picking away at. So some people did not when we closed it down. Um, some people have been sending us emails. So as, as we follow up with parents and see if they're still attending and they put in the whole time, we are adding a wait list so if there is um if you do still have a need to do that if they can email myself or kelly nelson then we will add that to the waiting list and we're hoping to get all students in because we did have a reboot in some of our staff so we have some more staff added to make our classroom sizes a little bit smaller um then we have middle school and high school credit recovery 
which will um, all um, parents and students will receive a um, email from Samantha Como, who will register them for their classes. And they'll have also a survey to fill out whether they're going to be in person or online. So the option is there. And um, that that will also be sent out in this week. Samantha and I am finalizing it tomorrow and she will be sending that out by the end of next, this week or the beginning of next week. But all parents who do have students who have not um, did not make um, their third grade quarter um, was notified already. So it's not gonna be like an aha or a shock that they're mm -hmm. um, being sent the email. Um, and then we have middle school and high school enrichments this year. We have robotics that's gonna be doing a two week and that is filled at 25 students for the two weeks. And we also have an art enrichment club that's by Ms. Um, Shaven, uh, Saban, who's gonna be doing that. And that's right now at 20, I kind of overbooked her and she's saying yes. <laughs> she really didn't want that many, but she got a helper. So, so she was looking for Miss Bible to help out. She's on vacation now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, we also have Dr. Parks doing a, um, a week's worth and they're doing something for the community. So I'm sure um, Dean, they'll be reaching out to you to see what they can do to help do a community effort poster or yes. flyer. So they'll be reaching out for you. Um, I'm also in charge of the creative choices um, and creative choices, which the camp theme is camp out. Um, it's still running from June 28th to August 18th, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5.30 at Francis Spring, and they are closed. There's a huge waiting list for that, so they're letting them in as people are asking for their vacation time. And the one thing that we are disappointed in a little bit is the CTI camp is not going to run the last week in June. There wasn't enough students that wanted to participate in that, but they did send out a survey, and they're looking to see if they can get some instructors for either the last week of July, the first week in August, to run it um, then where it will be a break after school gets out. I think that school gets out on the 23rd to start that camp right away. There wasn't much interest. I think kids will be- Might be working. Yeah, yeah, working or um, it's for eighth graders. So right. some of them don't have, they just want time off. Yeah. I'm sure there. So they um, did get a good response. So they're gonna let me know which week they will hold that. And we will re-advertise that again to them. Right. And then the other piece we have going in the special education world is our extended school year. So uh, we're going to be at Lincoln School at Samoset, Francis Drake, and the high school, running programs for every single grade, running the gamut of everything that we have throughout the school year to prevent any regression of skills. Currently, we have 307 students registered. Um, even though the active registration has closed, we take late registrations all the way up through because we want to make sure the students are getting any services that they're entitled to. We're doing academics. We're doing some enrichment of our own. Ms. Koska has uh, been kind enough to share some of the things that have been successful in the more academic-based summer school with the special education summer school. So we're really excited to get that going. Um, Coach Charpentier is going to come in and do some adapted PE. The kids always love that one. And I'm just looking forward to it. We want it to be educational and fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. The kids need some of that this summer. So they want to be there every day? Yeah. So just um, we, we, um, bus lists will go out by the third week in June, the bus company has promised. Um, the middle school and high school bus routes for our program for the, um, the um, program for credit recovery is they're going to have stops. What we did add a fourth bus. So it's like JA district, Northwest district, Francis Street district, Northwest district in town, center of town back. Um, knowing that some of our bus stops were probably a little far away. So we have done the relocation that, and that will be posted um, to our websites and given to us by um, the third week in June before school gets out. So they'll have those routes up. And same with um, our um, enrichment programs. They will get an email from their teacher in the next week just saying welcome, and then they'll get the email with their bus stop and times the um, week school gets out. Yeah. Yeah. Just the lunch is being served. Yeah. Every day, it's a very, very summer. Um, the, the highest participation rates again, yeah, we're just soaring. soaring. And we do have to thank Chartwells. They're yeah. very good to us and flexible yeah. with yeah. their menus and fulfill our requests throughout the summer as well. We have the rec department in our schools this summer. Correct. So it's we not stop. We tested this a few years ago on school vacation. We were amazed at the response. Yeah. And, and, and then 
the Spanish American Center has has programs. Wow. A lot of the churches are offering programs, which is all good. And um, even our conservation agent um, has been doing like once a week, been doing like uh, tours, you know, uh, hikes through the woods. And once we get them out there, though, so we're getting away more of a balance of this, which is you know when you know you really get caught up in this whole thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's nothing else to do. That's right. So um, this provides some other options, healthier. And so oh, uh, and I hope we can do the police academy again this year. That's yes. always well received. Yeah, that is. And uh, so. Every student should have something, something, to, something do to do this summer, summer. Yes. or mow the lawn. We have yeah. chores for. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to the minutes. Yeah. Thank to make a motion to twenty-three. Make a motion to approve. And second, anybody have any questions, errors, omissions? Nope. Looks good. All in favor? Those opposed? Thank you. We did the finance updates. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a two for one obsolete equipment. We're going to declare. We, have, yeah. we do have a policy subcommittee meeting. We did meet uh, today briefly. Um, so we will be having another meeting um, before our next, you know, the same day as our next school committee meeting um, so that we have a little bit more time to spend on policy. But we did review the corrections that were made around sort of the school committee's goals. And so Chris is going to just finalize those. And they will be ready for the next. Is our handbook um, electronic yet? So we can I, do a word search and all that. I don't know. Put in there. I okay. thought it was our handbook. Our hand, your student handbook. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Both are, yes. The rules yeah. and regulations and everything are in there. And you yes. Can search by, and it, and you can go good. Thank you. And we do need to review the um, student handbooks because that hasn't been done in a couple of years. So that's. Um, going to be next to, on our agenda okay. as well. All right. Well, now on to obsolete equipment. Found more. Jets and. Yes. We're still opening up closets. Yes. So hey. to classic. A vote for surplus. <laughs> Motion to declare this long list of stuff, stuff surplus. Second it. All right. Anybody have any questions? Any yeah. interest in any of this stuff? <laughs> Huh. All in favor? Thank you. And now we'll move on to new world business. The reports actually were included in the packet. Is there an HR or an enrollment? HR enrollment, then motion to adjourn. I, just, I was just going to say, I just wanted to commend all the um, youth who spoke um, tonight. Some of them were very brave um, and talking about, you know, very personal things. Um, so we appreciate that. I'll echo that as well. And I just wanted to also note uh, at our next meeting, I would like to submit a draft of a resolution against the closure of the labor and delivery unit at the hospital. I feel like that has an impact directly on our school system and we should take a stance on it. So I'll write something up and submit it to Chris. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Those opposed can stay here to eat cookies and 